The Dragon Coaster is the signature attraction at Rye Playland. This classic wooden roller coaster is most well known for its gorgeous dragon tunnel and appearances in both music videos and movies over the years. This 90 plus year old coaster also offers a stunningly smooth ride experience and a long one too. But does all this add up to a good ride? Find out in this review of the Dragon Coaster. This wood coaster was designed by Frederick Church to fit atop the park's classic Ye Old Mill Dark Ride they previously made. The turnarounds are placed above the Ye Old Mill, and the valleys are placed in clearings in between the tunnels. Standing 79 feet or 24 meters tall, and featuring 3,399 feet or 1,036 meters of track, the Dragon Coaster is one of the largest roller coasters in the world when it originally opened. The coaster still makes its mark on Playland's skyline to this very day. The monstrous wooden structure runs along the parking lot and the midways. The white paint scheme is perfectly sued for a classic wood coaster like this, and the ride looks very well taken care of. The ride is also plussed by that beautiful dragon tunnel. It's one of the most visually stunning thematic elements on any coaster in my opinion. And then you also have the ride's historic station building. Not only is it a beauty, but a speaker emits a loud roar whenever the train passes over the first turnaround. Playland is clearly proud of this coaster, and they've done a great job maintaining it. The ride is very smooth, outside of a little shuffling on the valleys. Now, the ride no longer runs its original trains, though. You can actually see the old lead car outside the main entrance. In the 1980s, the park decided to add lighter Morgan trains. The only two other church coasters still operating to this day are both Giant Dippers in California, and coincidentally, both those rides also operate with Morgan trains. Now these trains look fantastic. I love the curved lead car and the scaly paint scheme. However, they have two flaws. One, they have just a single position lap bar that has a really low locking position. This makes Dragon Coaster a very tight squeeze for larger riders. Two, their lighter weight causes them to navigate the course more slowly than the old rolling stock, according to those who experienced both and old POVs that ran roughly 6 to 7 seconds faster. This is easily the park's most popular attraction. The coaster typically runs just a single 24 person train, so the ride usually has a 15 to 30 minute wait. The station does not have air gates. Rather, the staff admits just enough people to fill the entire train. Seating is then on a first come, first serve basis, and they do not allow you to wait for specific rows. There actually is a sign saying this. The back is my favorite seat if you can get it, but unfortunately, the ride experience just isn't particularly strong in any car. Once ready, the operators pull a giant lever to manually dispatch the train. You then round a corner and ascend the lift hill. Once at the top, you get a brief view of Long Island Sound, and then you round a super slow turn, which leads into the main drop. This drop is 75 feet or 23 meters tall, and if you're in that back car, you will get a good pop of airtime. Just don't get used to that on this ride. You then ascend the first turnaround. You can't hear that aforementioned roar when you're on ride, and due to the lack of speed, you'll get no airtime nor laterals here. You then navigate a double down, but it's too slow and shallow to offer any airtime. You then rise into the Dragon Tunnel and navigate the second turnaround. While you won't get any airtime going into this element, the visual of being swallowed by a famed dragon is undeniably cool. The turnaround in the belly of the dragon is another slow one, but it does take place in near total darkness at least. When you emerge into the daylight, you dip back down to the ground, and if you're in the very back, you will get some very weak floater airtime here. You then hop into the third turnaround, and if you're up front, you'll get your only airtime which is actually a pretty strong pop. You then drop back down to the ground, glide over a speed hill, and rise into the fourth turnaround. Sadly, none of these three hills will offer any airtime. You then traverse a slow bunny hill that hops over one of Ye Old Mill's tunnels and traverse another dull turnaround. You then head down another small double down, crawl over another small bunny hill, and head into the sixth turnaround again getting no airtime on any of these elements. 
you then have one final drop, which does give an itty bitty pop of airtime in the back, and then you head into the brake run. As you go back into the station, you'll actually stop further back, because there's a separate unload area. So what would I rate the Dragon Coaster? I would give this classic attraction a 4 out of 10. Dragon Coaster is a historic and aesthetically pleasing attraction. The ride's placement, Keller Scheme, and Dragon Tunnel all look amazing. But the ride itself is underwhelming. While it is pretty smooth, the Morgan trains just don't navigate the layout with enough speed. The ride has no laterals and barely any airtime. You get just one strong pop in the back and another strong pop in the front. All the dead spots in this layout make it a bit dull for a seasoned coaster enthusiast, but this clearly is a crowd pleaser for the families visiting Playland. So those are my thoughts on the Dragon Coaster of Rye Playland. What are your thoughts on this classic church coaster? Do you like it more than me? I would love to hear your thoughts on this ride down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.